Hi, I'm Matt Collins. I'd like to welcome you to Bob Weber Auto Mart on Douglas Avenue here in Racine, across from Douglas Park. We specialize in one-year-old, low-mileage, almost new cars. And if you'd like to stop by and see them, or see them on our website, BobWeberAutomart.com, we can save you between five and ten thousand dollars on your next almost new car purchase. Welcome to another edition of Sports Junkies. I'm Steve Sparky, Pfeiffer from the Wendy's Big Show on Sports Radio 1250. WSSP along with Gary Wolfel from the Racine Journal Times here at RacineSportsZone.com. Time to do some pack talk as we talk about a huge victory by the Packers over the Bears, sending them to the playoffs, taking on the San Francisco 49ers this coming Sunday. 340 kickoff for that one on Sunday at Lambeau Field. Did you say 340? 340. That's a weird time. 3.40 kickoff. You know what? I didn't realize that. Yeah. Why is that? I don't know. It's always usually 3.25, right? Yeah, uh, 3.25 during the regular season, right. But, I mean, you've got a 7.10 kickoff on Saturday night for another game. So, Correct. I mean, we get to the playoffs. I have no idea what, what the logic is, but it all works out. So, the Packers beat the Bears early on. Did they really? Yeah. Oh. Early on, Rodgers throws the interception in the, in, in the end zone. You're going, mm-hmm. okay, maybe he's got a little rust. Mm-hmm. Then you have the pass deflected. That's an interception. And then you're going, ooh. Well, we, we're still okay because Cutler's going to throw a couple interceptions. Yeah. And he really did. He didn't. I mean, he threw the one at the end. Now it's desperation. Had to yeah, you know, you know what, though? I mean, Cutler did lose that game for him. Yeah, right? he did. He did. I thought so they went in, he did. He did. He lost the game for him. And, and, no, and this, this is one of the subtle, subtle things about the NFL game yesterday. All right. They had the ball on the last drive, right? Possession. Plenty of time on the clock, right? And they're moving the ball a little bit downfield. He decides to throw the ball deep. They have, like, it was almost like 50 seconds left. Instead of just being patient and just chiseling your way down the field, he throws it deep. It was broken up, right? Number one. Number two, who was it? All Sean Jeffrey cut across the middle. The guy was wide. Oh, that was Marshall who dropped oh, Marshall, the ball. Marshall. Okay. Marshall, Marshall, Marshall slipped dropped and fell and dropped it. It was, it was behind, behind him. him. And I'm thinking, if Butler, I'm Butler, Cutler leads him. Puts the ball out in front. He's in stride. He's taking it maybe not to the house, but he's going to get down to the 10 or 15. It was a horrible, horrible throw. You know, that's the other thing. So two plays by Cutler down the stretch killed him. Okay, fine. But the reason they lost that game was because of the defense of Mel Tucker, the defensive coordinator. I mean, we're talking about coaches getting fired all over the NFL, right? Mm -hmm. Leslie Frazier fired in Minnesota. Jim Schwartz fired in Detroit. All that going on. Now you look at that defensive coordinator in his first year for the Chicago Bears and Mel Tucker. Right. right. First year. Who could have been the Wisconsin coach, by the way. Thank God that didn't That was out. very close, I heard. Right. So he, I mean, I don't even understand. I understand you lost Brian Urlacher. Okay. I get Briggs is mm-hmm. a year older this right, year. Right. And I get they lost they lost someone for part of the year. So there are some things that you build into, okay, why this isn't working. But you didn't show any progress at all stopping the run. Right. Now, they came into this game, and they changed up the philosophy. Right. Instead of playing back, they attacked, and they blitzed. Exactly. And they tried to bring some pressure, and they made it harder for the Packers to run the and, and, and that's where I thought McCarthy did a poor job. And I've been a McCarthy backer, and I still am. But I thought he did a poor job of adjusting because they stacked up against the run. Sure they did. I would have had Rodgers throwing the ball all the time. You're getting one-on-one coverage. Man, I, I was surprised he didn't uh, air it out even more. And I'm glad he did it B- because you had to protect Rodgers to a certain degree. You're right, it, exactly. If, if you want to talk about what I was surprised by, I was surprised by how good that offensive line protected Rodgers throughout this game. One, I thought, two, no. <laughs> I thought he would have been a tackling dummy. I really did. I, I don't think any of those offensive linemen wanted to see their name in paper on Monday morning saying, hey, I was the guy that gave up the sure. sack that hurt Aaron Rodgers again. again. I'll bet there was just a, a tremendous amount of pressure on that offense. No question. To, and they did a great job, like yeah. you pointed out. I, I thought that was one of their best games of the year. Yeah, they played very well up front. Uh, the running back, Starks uh, and Lacey. Lacey playing hurt, obviously. Uh, I thought they did well in the backfield. I had no issues with them. Welcome back, Jordy Nelson, to the offense. Now they're in Rodgers back because Matt yeah. Flynn forgot what he looked like. Uh, but at, at points, I thought Rodgers was almost kind of forcing the ball to Jordy a little bit. But Jordy Nelson come up with big plays, and Randall Cobb returns as well with Aaron Rodgers, and he comes up with the biggest play. I, I'll tell you what. I have a newfound respect for Aaron Rodgers yesterday. He was hurt. He was definitely hurt. And Based on what? I saw two plays where he went down, and just for like a second, you could just see him holding his shoulder and wincing. And he did a great job of just playing. There, there isn't any doubt in my mind that guy's hurt. He no, shouldn't be playing. 
There is I've been any saying doubt. this I, for I, weeks. And if they would have, you know, just zoomed in on those particular plays, I think people would have appreciated, like, Garrett, this guy is hurt. I'll give you more yeah. evidence that he's hurt and yeah. shouldn't be playing. Yeah. Name the last time you can remember the Packers having three quarterbacks active on game day. Three. There you go. All three were there, active. There, there you go. You had Rodgers play yeah, Tolzien. Yeah. When I saw that before the game, I go, now there's no question he's not ready. Because mm-hmm. now they're making darn sure exactly. they're going to be they're, prepared they're, for this. That they're protected. Right. No doubt they're about it. Absolutely right. So, but, yes, he went out there and played. And played, I mean, considering everything, I think he played fairly well. I thought he played great for the first time back. You yep. know, I mean, you, you knew there was going to be a one-period, maybe two-period adjustment period for him. But I'll tell you what, he threw some lasers yesterday. Yeah, no uh, question. I mean, <laughs> now on the defensive side of the football, I... <laughs> so in other words, next week at this time we'll be saying, is Tom Capers fired yet? I don't know. Oh, I mean, yeah, I, he's gone. No, I'm, he's no, gone. no, no. I'm going to say next week at this time. I, I don't know what to expect in the San Francisco game. I'll be honest with you. San Francisco's had their numbers the last two times. The, mm-hmm. the, the second to last time that they played... Kaepernick ran all over him. So then they spend the whole summer, and they tell the entire U.S., hey, guys, we're the Green Bay Packers, and we don't know how the hell to stop this, so we're going to go talk to every college coach alive to try and figure it out. Well, Jim Harbaugh watches TV. And that, and that, okay, cool. So go ahead and do that. Great you coaching. bring everybody up, and Anquan Bowles going to catch for 200 yards. We're going to throw for 400, and peace. See you later. Okay, so now you come into this matchup. They've burned you both ways now the last two times. I have no idea how you defend the San Francisco 49ers if you're the Green Bay Packers, and I don't know what the Niners have up their sleeve because you know Jim Harbaugh exactly. has something. Exactly. If, if I'm the Packers, I'm worried about Vernon Davis. You, oh, you, yes. you know what you can do on the wideouts, but Harbaugh knows that the Packers' sec, uh, safeties are horrible. Morgan Burnett made a bunch of boneheaded mistakes again He's yesterday. You know when uh, Shields got beat for that long pass? Never came over. Did, did you see Shields look at him, though? He, yeah. After the play was over, he's looking back like, come on, man, you know? Yeah. But, but again, Shields shouldn't have got behind him like he did. I mean, you can't just totally rely on another guy to have your back. I mean, it, it was poor play on both sure. parts. But, but the bottom line is Morgan Burnett did not play well yesterday again. No, I, I, I said before, both safeties, and, and they just gave Morgan Burnett all that money. So yeah. I, I got a feeling Morgan Burnett's going to be the safety next year, too. Now, who plays next to him? We're going to have to wait and find out mm-hmm. where, where that all ends up. Then we have the middle linebacker position. A.J. Hawk made a, a tackle. Um, no, he, he one tackle. No. <laughs> Gotta like that. I don't know. He did make a key tackle at one yeah, point. Yes. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, so from that aspect, whatever. Yeah. He was there. Yeah. Uh, Jabari Lattimore. Oh, yeah. Hey. Oh my God. You're you're Lattimore. really athletic, Jabari, um, and you can play, but you appear to have a Torrance Marshall sized brain. I. I I, I do not understand Road how you can still not understand where you're supposed to be. Right. I mean, this has happened now a couple of times when he's had the opportunity to play. And, and, Just figure it out, man. You've been here for a couple of years. Well, one more negative touch on, on what was a great game for the Packers. I mean, one of the greatest games in Packer Bears history from a Packers perspective. Nick Perry, if there was any ever doubt that he is not an outside he's linebacker, hard. Did you see him on that isolation play, though? The he team. came over, and he missed the guy. It was like he was tackling a ghost. He just went right by him, and I go, no, oh. They no. got him in open field. He was done. Now, first of all, Perry's to blame for, in a man coverage, going with somebody else, or in zone, going with somebody else like a man. So he comes all the way across the field. Forte goes out in the flat. He's got to come all the way back across and the field. And he big Yeah, but wait a second. As he's running back across the field, now he's got to stop and plant and then try to make a tackle. His momentum was going this way, first off. Oh, Second I'm off, sorry. No, hold on. Second off, he's playing with a bad foot, okay? okay I agree with that. All I right, with that. so if you're playing with a bad foot as it is, and now you're trying to stop and plant with that bad foot, I mean, that's, all I'm saying is he's hurt. They, they started Malumba in front of him. Right, right. That gives you an idea how bad Nick Perry is. I agree, I agree. So the fact that he's out there even playing is something. Mm-hmm. Brad Jones, inactive for this game, which then put him in a position where they had to play Lattimore, yeah, obviously. Yeah, exactly. Again, there were so hey. many things in this football game. Oh, it was awesome. I can't believe they figured out a way to win it. It was an awesome game. One of the best games I've seen. You know, and that came on the heels of the Bear, uh, Cowboys game, which was a Two great game. Ago, yeah, right. right. But uh, the guy I wanted to talk to about, and we talked about him early in the season when he took over at wide receiver, Jared Boykin. He played play. the game. Yeah. That was um, And you know what's crazy stuff? I want to know who yelled at him. Because the he had the ball. Rodgers came up to him, and right. originally when I was watching, I thought Rodgers told him. Right. But then you see Rodgers turn around, and I'm like, well, it wasn't Rodgers. Somebody else yeah, had that you know who it was. It was John Kuhn. 
John Kuhn was on the sideline with one of the coaches, and John Kuhn is just going, pick it up, pick it up, or yell. He could see him yelling. Yeah. And all of a sudden, Roger saw that, and he re- relayed that to Boykin. Boykin. But I'll tell you what, Boykin has been great. What a find. I mean, he's just uh, well, a guy that Jacksonville didn't want. Yeah. Um, and now he's a fourth wide receiver for this Packers team, and we'll see how much they use him in the offense going forward. I'll tell you the other thing. You start talking about guys that are surprises this year. Andrew Corliss, since Finley went down, he's played he's playing like he played his rookie year. I mean, he hasn't played this well since that injury after that first year. And he is now looking like a guy that might be the tight end of the future for this Packer team going forward. Him and Bostic, the other guy that's on the IR now for the rest of the year, those might be the two tight ends. They may not have to go draft a tight end this year. You almost get the feeling this is almost like the year the Packers won the Super Bowl. It's not. It's no, not. But, but no, it's I, not I, a magic I, carpet ride. No, no, no. But there are some, some similarities to it. Like, where they get, they're getting the plays. Like that pass to Corliss. That Conti stepped in front. And everybody thinking, at, at the very least, it's going to be knocked down, but probably intercepted. And the next thing you know, Corliss has the ball. Sure. There's no way. You throw that ball 100 times, 99% of the time, the ball's going to be either intercepted Chris or Chris Conti's caught. not very good. I know, but <laughs> I just <laughs> not very. But good. I mean, even a bad guy is going, right. you know, f- knock it down. Now, I'm gonna tell you why this isn't the Magic Carpet Ride of 2000. I, I agree with you, though. Okay. I do. It's not the Magic Carpet I'm saying Ride. Similarities because of the defensive side of the ball. Right. You had a, a defensive player of the year, Charles Woodson. You had a guy playing as well as any cornerback in the league in Tremont Williams, mm-hmm. and you had a great safety, a playmaking safety in Nick Collins. And then, of course, you had Clay Matthews getting pressure on the quarterback. And you had guys playing way over their head. And Eric Walden. And remember that big dude, Green, on the defensive line? Sure, sure. They picked him up. He was just walking down the street in Green Bay. They just signed him and brought him in. So, from that perspective, you had all of those guys. On this defense, you don't have one guy other than maybe Sam Shields. That can make an impact. Like, and our playmakers. Yep. You had, like, four on that team. You have one kind of in Shields because he doesn't do it consistently. But you know, That's you know, the you, difference between that team and this team. But, but I'll tell you what. Their two corner guys aren't great, but they're good. They're good guys. And in, in the NFL, you better have good corners. And the Packers might have two of the best corners in, in the big picture. No. So it's going to help them. It, it's such a, their passing game. <laughs> I'm not a huge Tremont guy. Why? I was. I, huge, played, yeah, I, I thought he's played well. I, 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 I was. I was a fan of Tremont a couple of years ago, but since that injury, he hasn't been the same guy. He's playing better. Yes, I'll give you. He's playing better. Well, than I, I, think, I think both of he and Shields have played better. Uh, and Shields needs to play at, at a more consistent level. Where he got beat yesterday was the one bad play. But, but you know what? Ball, Jay, I thought he played pretty well. In, in most situations, Leroy Butler always talks about this yeah. with Sam Shields when we were on the Big Show. Leroy always says, "Look, as long as Sam." can kind of keep his hand on you, kind of sort of. Yeah, right, right. To kind of see you. Sam Speed's going to make up the rest of it. Exactly. And he's going to get back to you. I agree. I agree. But, but again, like you said, he thought he had safety help, I think. He let him get out farther than he normally would, mm-hmm. um, and then he got burned. But that happens. All right, Packers, San Francisco coming up this Sunday. Who you got? I picked the Packers to beat the Bears. I'm picking the 49ers to beat the Packers. Uh, it, the 49ers, to me, are just like the Giants are to the Packers. They, they just don't have an answer for them. And like you said, they have so many weapons. The, the Packers were uh, on a cloud with yeah. this bear game. It's going to be very hard for them to reach that emotional level again. And the other problem they have is to. this Niners defense, their front seven, is going to get after the quarterback, and they're going to stop the run. Mm-hmm. So those two things are going to force Rodgers to be a one-dimensional. And once that becomes a factor, and they can pin their ears back and come after Aaron Rodgers, that's going to be an issue. And, and you made a great point the last time 49ers and Packers played. Kaepernick was basically a passer. Yep. I mean, he didn't pose any threats, you know, running the ball. I guarantee you he's going to be posing threats this time around. Well, the other thing, too, is earlier this year when they played, Bolden had 200 yards, right? Correct. Crabtree didn't play in that game. Crabtree's Correct. been hurt. Correct. Now, Crabtree's not 100%, but at least he's out there and he's going to be a factor. He, he, he's a big-time receiver. So we're going to see if they can deal with him. And Vernon hey, Davis, he, 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 I agree with you, is the key to the game. No, no question. You know what I find, find amazing, though, is Kaepernick, before the season, Everybody was Love. on the Kaepernick. Um, Bandwagon. Who, yeah, who is the one who called him the greatest quarterback? He said he could go, oh, Ron Jaworski. Yeah. Before the season goes on the air and says, Jaworski could go down as the greatest quarterback ever. And I'm thinking, like, you know, you're crazy. So this morning I, I went on NFL.com, and I went back to the first Packer game. And afterwards, Mariucci and Belichick, they were raving like this was Dan Marino, Brett Favre, all wrapped up in one, you know. 
he hasn't had a great year. Not at all. He, he, he's no. been a good quarterback, but not a great quarterback. Not at all. And certainly not in the uh, class of being one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. There it is, another edition of Sports Junkies, Packer Talk. Steve Sparky Pfeiffer along with Gary Wolf. We'll see you next week after the Packers take on the 49ers right here at RacineSportsZone.com.